Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on the antecubital fossa anatomy. The antecubital fossa is a triangular intermuscular depression on the anterior surface of the elbow joint. The roof consists of the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and deep fascia. The deep fascia includes the bicipital aponeurosis, which is an extension of the medial lower border of the biceps brachii tendon. It causes downwards and medially to merge with the deep fascia at the origin of the forearm flexor muscles and separates the brachial artery from the median cubital vein. The floor of the cubital fossa consists of the brachialis and supinator muscles the superior border or the base of the triangle is a line connecting the medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. The medial border consists of the lateral border of the pronator teres and the lateral border of the cubital fossa consists of the medial border of the brachial radialis. Contents of the antecubital fossa includes the radial nerve which lies between the brachial radialis and the brachialis the median nerve, which lies medial to the brachial artery, the terminal part of the brachial artery. The brachial artery bifurcates near the inferior part of the cubital fossa opposite the neck of the radius into the superficial radial artery and deep ulna artery. Associated veins and the tendon of the biceps muscle. Anatomy of the superficial veins over the cubital fossa. Inter-individual variation exists. The cephalic vein is one of the primary superficial veins that drain the upper limb. The origin is the radial aspect of the superficial venous network of the dorsum of the hand in the anatomical snuff box. The cause of the cephalic vein, it causes upwards on the lateral aspect of the forearm and the arm. It ascends over the lateral side of the cubital fossa to lie in a groove along the lateral edge of the biceps brachii. At the lower border of the pectoralis major, it courses between the pectoralis major and the deltoid at the deltopectoral groove. It then passes through the anterior wall of the axilla and penetrates the clavi pectoral fascia to join the first part of the axillary vein. It drains the palm of the hand, lateral aspect of the forearm and lateral aspect of the arm. Tributaries includes the median cubital vein and the accessory cephalic veins and it terminates in the first part of the axillary vein. The basilic vein. It originates from the ulnar aspect of the superficial venous network of the dorsum of the hand. It courses upwards on the medial aspect of the forearm and the arm, ascends up along the medial border of the biceps brachii, anterior to the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It pierces the brachial fascia at the basilic hiatus at the middle of the upper arm. It courses medial to the brachial artery and unites with the brachial veins in the axilla to form the axillary vein. It drains the palm of the hand medial aspect of the forearm and medial aspect of the arm. Tributaries includes the median cubital vein and the median antibrachial vein. The median cubital vein originates from the cephalic vein distal to the lateral epicondyle and terminates in the basilic vein just above the elbow. It is a superficial vein overlying the bicipital aponeurosis at the roof of the cubital fossa. It forms either a H or M type pattern joining the medial antibrachial vein, basilic vein, and cephalic vein. Relevance of the antecubital fossa anatomy in clinical practice. It is relevant in nerve blocks such as the median radial ana and cutaneous nerves. A link to the relevant videos will be provided in the video description below. In advertent intra-arterial injection, arteries at risk includes the brachial artery and the anomalous ulnar artery. 
Accidental cannulation of the brachial artery can occur during venipuncture or venous cannulation at the cubital fossa. The risk of brachial artery cannulation is lessened by the bicipital aponeurosis, also known as the grace of God fascia, which separates the brachial artery from the median cubital vein. Accidental cannulation of the anomalous ulna artery can occur as it lies superficially just below the median cubital vein. It is present in 2% of the population. Intraarterial injection of drugs such as thiopental. Symptoms and signs include immediate within 2 hours and late. Immediate symptoms include intense burning pain. The drug injection should be stopped immediately. Skin blanching and blisters. Within 2 hours, edema, hyperesthesia and motor weakness can occur. Late signs include signs of arterial thrombosis and gangrene. Mechanism Crystals of thiopental form in the arterioles. Arteries vessel constrict from local release of noradrenaline. And arteritis results in thrombosis. Emboli forms from adenosine triphosphate release from red blood cells and platelet aggregates. This causes ischemia or gangrene in the forearm, hand, and fingers. Management. Stop the injection. Leave the needle or cannula in the artery. Dilute the irritant by flushing the vessel with isotonic saline or heparin saline. Vasodilation. With IV pepavirin 40 mg or IV lidocaine 1% 5 ml. Lidocaine reduces vasospasm and it has analgesic effect as well. Analgesia and sympathectomy using stellate ganglion block, brachial plexus block, or guanatidine block. For guanatidine block, IV guanatidine 10 to 20 mg plus heparin 500 units in 25 to 40 ml of saline, distal to the arterial tonique, which is left inflated for 20 minutes. Guanatidine blocks alpha adrenergic neurons and depletes noradrenaline stores. The effect can last for several weeks. We should proceed with anticoagulation with IV heparin and warfarin. Removal of the intra-arterial cannula once immediate reaction subsides. Remove the cannula if the hand is well perfused. Compression of the site of cannula removal to avoid hematoma formation. Insertion of lines. The cephalic or basilic veins are alternative safer routes to the central veins via long line insertion. However, the acute curvature at the clavi pectoral fascia may hinder the long venous catheter from gaining access to the central veins. Fluid infusion cannot be provided at a fast rate due to the length of the IV line. Arterial line insertion will be discussed later in a subsequent video. Nerve injuries such as injuries to the median ulna radial nerve are discussed in relevant videos. A link to the videos will be provided in the video description. Lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. This nerve crosses the fascia on the roof of the cubital fossa deep to the cephalic vein. Damage to this nerve is possible during venipuncture or cannulation of the cephalic vein. These are my references. Thank you.